The Fatigue Pilot, Recognizing and Managing Fatigue. Hi, my name is Carl Valeri, and I blog at expertaviator.com. I'm also co-host of the Stuck Mike Gavcast, and today I want to talk to you about pilot fatigue, how you can recognize fatigue, and also manage your fatigue levels. In the past 10 years, fatigue has been a contributing factor in numerous accidents and incidents. Recently, NASA did a survey of regional airline pilots and over 1,400 crew members, 80% of which admitted they nodded off during a flight at some time. In February 13, 2008, Go Flight 1002 flew right past their destination. Halfway through the flight, the crew fell asleep. They were awoken, possibly by radio calls. They landed safely, but with minimum fuel. Later, the captain was diagnosed with severe obstructive sleep apnea. And, more recently, Colgan 3407, February 12, 2009, crashed in Buffalo, New York. The NTSB concluded that the pilot's performance was likely impaired because of fatigue. The captain had slept in the crew room the night before and was on duty and awake for more than 15 hours when the accident happened. The first officer spent most of her time sleeping in a jump seat the night before on the way to work. These conditions made it possible for them to not recognize an abnormal flight condition. This plus some other contributing factors such as training, but fatigue was considered one of the secondary factors and contributed to this accident. So let's look at fatigue. What is fatigue? Fatigue is a physiological state in which there's a decreased capacity to perform certain cognitive tasks and an increased variability in performance. Research has established empirically based knowledge of sleep and circadian principles, which we'll look at later. Current regulations, though, and policies and practices do not incorporate this scientific research. Pilots are on their own to combat fatigue. With this increasingly complex and demanding schedules, the challenges to combat fatigue are amplified. So what can we do as pilots to combat this fatigue situation? First, let's know the risk factors involved in fatigue. Certain risk factors are multiple flight legs, long duty hours, limited time off, early report times, less than optimal sleeping conditions, rotating and non-standard work hours, and jet lag. This fatigue is attributed to all pilots, both short haul, domestic pilots, they can commonly identify sleep dep deprivation and high workload as the main factors contributing to their fatigue. Whereas long haul crew members generally attribute sleep deprivation and circadian disruptions caused by multiple time zone crossings as the main cause of their fatigue. So let's study fatigue. Two main processes, the main processes in fatigue are circadian rhythm and sleep regulation. Circadian rhythm and sleep regulation. Circadian rhythms are these daily behavioral and physiological changes that are cyclic across the day. There's this biological clock located in the brain that controls these little 24-hour cycles. Circadian rhythms result in two periods of sleepiness throughout the day. The maximum sleep propensity occurs in the early morning and in the mid-afternoon. Now sleep. Daily patterns of sleep strongly modulate alertness and cognitive performance. The brain requires a regular pattern of sleep to be fully functional. The brain also regulates the drive to sleep in order to restore alertness and performance. Now the average person usually needs about 8 hours of sleep per day to remain fully alert and functional. Let's look at some sleep related processes now. Certain sleep related processes are sleep regulation, this elevated sleep drive, desynchronization, and sleep inertia. 
Now, sleep regulation is the drive for sleep, which increases over time since the last period of sleep. So your body is trying to tell you to sleep. It increases with cumulative deficit in sleep relative to the average eight hour day requirement. Again, as the day goes on, your drive to sleep increases. The sleep drive is lowest, of course, in the morning, right after you woke up and got sleep. The drive sleep increases the ability to sustain attention and engage in cognitive activities is decreased. Once sleep begins and the sleep drive process is in place, it actually decreases until we awaken because we just got sleep. The more a person is deprived though of good quality sleep relative to this eight hours that most people need, the stronger the drive for sleep. Now the two main fatigue processes that we talked about, circadian rhythm and sleep regulation, both combine and dynamically change the sleep tendency and the ability to maintain stable, stable alertness performance across a 24-hour period and also across a few days. So both the circadian rhythm and sleep regulation combine with all these other changes, and it can lead to a really sleep-deprived state over days. Now, another part of these processes for sleep is what's called elevated sleep drive. Daily upswings in alertness produced by the circadian rhythms, okay, offset the decrease in alertness produced by the depletion of, of sleep regulatory process. All right. After about 16 hours of continuous wakefulness, most adults begin to notice a reduction in the speed of performance in alertness levels. Now, previous history of insufficient sleep quantity and quality can magnify the changes in behavior and alertness. There's three factors in this elevated sleep drive. Uh, in increasing time continuously awake is one of the factors that will elevate your sleep drive. Inadequate sleep for one or more consecutive days will elevate your sleep drive. Disruptive sleep due to medical conditions such as sleep apnea or environmental factors such as, say, the dog barking through the night will also elevate your drive to sleep throughout the day. Another factor is that desynchronization in our sleep process this is another important factor in the sleep process. Pilots tend to override their internal biological clock either because of their schedules or the schedules they impose upon themselves and attempt to sleep at times that are not always consistent with the biological drive to sleep. This can adversely affect both alertness while awake and at work and also later on the ability to achieve restorative sleep. This may result in impaired cognitive functions and sleepiness. Now let's talk about sleep inertia. Sleep inertia causes a temporary degradation in performance immediately after awakening. This is when you wake up and you have that what I call fog. So you wake up and you're not really alert. The degradation or loss of alertness is dependent on the depth of the sleep at the time of awakening. And this degradation dissipates after awakening on a time scale ranging from minutes to a few hours. So for instance, you wake up after a long sleep and you're going to be very, very tired. And it's going to take you a long time to get back and alert. So let's look at something here, a chart that shows our effectiveness over time and our performance based on these circadian rhythms and also our sleep patterns. And let's take a, a person that's uh, been flying over a five-day period and is about to do a trip over to uh, a long-haul trip over to, say, Europe. On day one, they get their normal sleep, and their awake period is has normal performances. And their circadian rhythms have that normal performance low on the first day. But that low is still, well, they're performing about 95% and uh, towards the end of the day they're performing at a hundred percent so that's day one now on they go and they sleep for eight hours and then on day two they have another start to a normal day where they have that peak of alertness in the morning and then that afternoon low and then it peaks again now this person decides to take a nap in the afternoon and notice what happens to their performance they get a spike in their performance in the afternoon 
but they took a nap. Why? Because they knew they'd be flying all night long. And from day two to day three, they fly all the way into day three, and they're asleep all night. And during that night duty period, due to the circadian low, and also their deprivation of sleep, because they've only had a little nap now, their performance effectiveness actually has been decreased down to 75% at one point during the evening. Now what this person does is they take a short nap and you see a spike in their performance. But that performance never gets up to 100% like it normally would. And it stays down a little bit lower than it normally would, about 10 to 15% throughout the day. So now they're awake and they finish their trip. They land and now they're going to go to the hotel and sleep. So to restore or recover this sleep, they sleep for nine hours. Now in day four, they have the normal circadian rhythms, you know, with the high in the afternoon and then the low in the early in the later afternoon and then goes back high again in the evening. And if you notice, though, that the performance level is still not at 100%, it's about 95%. So at the night into day four, they sleep a regular nine hours for recovery type sleep. And on the first day, their performance increases again. Uh, on the excuse me, on the fifth day, their performance increases again, but it's still not at 100%. So you've noticed we've had two days of recovery sleep now, and their performance still isn't at the 100% le level. So this is what happens during somebody who is flying overseas through the night. You can see this real low in their performance while they're flying throughout the evening. So let's look at how we can prevent accidents now that we know that they can happen due to fatigue. Well, get rest and don't fly fatigued. Some of the warning signs of fatigue though, if we are flying and how we can recognize this is, there's a few ways, eyes going in and out of focus. Uh, for me, my eyes start to shut. Your head bobs involuntarily. You have persistent yawning. You have really spotty short-term memory, and uh, you may have uh, wandering or poorly organized thoughts. Or you may miss or have erroneous performance on routine procedures. And of course, degradation of control accuracy. You may not fly as well. So let's look at certain countermeasures to these, uh, these, and these symptoms and to fatigue. Well, one of the ways we can counter uh, combat the fatigue is by long naps, being, say, from three to four hours. And this actually can uh, restore alertness uh, from up from 12 to 15 hours. Now, the important thing, like we talked about before, sleep inertia, is that you have to give yourself some time, at least uh, 15 to 20 minutes after awakening, to become fully alert before assuming any air crew duties. So that's, that's some time. You've got to give yourself some time. Now, another thing that we should do, and, and this works for folks at work or go home for lunch, is short power naps, up to 10 to 30 minutes. And this will restore your alertness for three to four hours. But again, after you awake, you have to give yourself time before you can start uh, crew duties as a pilot. Some other countermeasures to fatigue are eating high-protein meals, drinking fluids, especially water, and Rotate flight tasks, converse with other crew members or even passengers. Keep the flight deck temperature cool, and if possible, move and stretch in the seat. Periodically get up and walk around the aircraft, but of course you're not going to be able to do this in your 172. And these are some good countermeasures. So we still see, though, that we will continue to operate in this fatigue-prone environment due to a couple things current regulations, which hopefully will change soon, and also your personal operating practices. Pilots must be proactive in recognizing and combat combating fatigue. And I hope I've given you a few tools and also convinced you that fatigue is something we need to look at and must be combated. This has been the Fatigue Pilot Recognizing and Managing Fatigue. Again, my name is Carl Valeri, and I blog at expertaviator.com, where you can find notes and links to this presentation. You can also come and listen to me at the Stuck Mike Avcast, which you can link to from my website. 
Well, hope you all have a safe flight and stay awake. <laughs>